guys, Dad Dash here, and I wanted to come to you today because there is an important update that Grubhub has made for its apps, and it is important uh, if you work Grubhub that you uh, get this information because this to me is a very big thing because this is something that I think all the apps should be doing, and it's another thing that Grubhub is doing that I think makes Grubhub definitely, in my opinion, one of the most driver-friendly apps. I'm sure there's people out there with a different opinion. But to me, the transparency, you can see everything on the order. Um, Grubhub sends you daily income breakdowns, weekly income breakdowns right to your email. They do a tremendous job of really keeping the driver informed. They pay they pay a, a hourly guarantee if you go on a block. Um, all these are little the little things that I think makes Grubhub or should make Grubhub a, a driver preferred app. And today or yesterday, I got this in my messages on my app and it says changes to in-app reassignments. Have you ever accidentally accepted an order, had safety concerns with the delivery drop off or pickup locations, or maybe you didn't have the right equipment? Starting now, if you immediately reassign an order after accepting it, it will not count towards a violation as long as the action does not result in a call to driver care. The reassignment will still affect your acceptance rate and could affect your driver level, but it will not count towards a violation on your record. To understand more about violations, click the link below. So what this is saying is, is that if you accept an order and you unassign it right away and it doesn't impact the customer, meaning it doesn't result in a customer calling in the driver care to complain their order's not getting delivered or the restaurant, you're, it's not going to count against you. And that's excellent. And that's how it should be. And, um, you know, all the apps should be forced to accept and adopt this because there should be a little period of time that, you know, again, this is a safety situation where if, if an order comes in, it's going to allow us to accept the order, pull over, review the order, and if we don't like it, get rid of it. Now, if we're holding on to it, getting to the restaurant, trying to multi-app or whatever, Grubhub's going to pick up on that. The app's going to pick up on that. It's going to count towards the pattern of behavior. So let's click in here to learn more about these account violations. And it just goes into the violation is a pattern or behavior that's usually associated with fraud, which is defined as an undesirable behavior that impacts the restaurant or diner. Now, the most important language there is pattern, meaning one time you do something on this list I'm going to show you isn't a problem. Multiple times, the, making it a course of your of the way you're operating your business, it is a problem. So this is, uh, you know, important. Everyone understands this. And if you get a violation, it says down here, it'll stay on for 90 days. And if you get three, vi three violations, basically in 90 days, you're going to get deactivated. So, I mean, that, that's not really, <laughs> if you're getting three violations in 90 days, I mean, I, you, you, you probably deserve to be deactivated because, uh, you know, I, I just feel like, you know, you, you've got to be doing something continuously in order to have it show up. Now, here are the things that can lead to an account violation. Unassigned orders, and that's what this deals with right here. Accepting an order, refusing to complete the delivery, resulting in a delayed or canceled experience for the restaurant and diner. So, again... You accept it, get rid of it. It's not going to count against you. Marking restaurants as closed when they're not closed. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Failing to deliver or delivery orders to the wrong place after pickup. <clears throat> not completing orders by either dropping off in the wrong location or by theft of orders or items. Delaying pickup or drop off orders you've accepted. Not moving to the restaurant or diner after accepting the order or leaving the restaurant. So, Keep that in mind. If you're getting those messages a lot, make sure you're, you know, if it's if it's if it's an issue with your app and you're actually moving towards the restaurant or the customer, make sure you're reporting that to uh, support. If it's not that and you're multi-apping, you may want to change your processes because that will get you in trouble and that will get you a violation. Overcharged orders, buying more items or services on the Grubhub driver's card than were ordered by the diner. 
masking or falsifying your location. That really deals with trying to be on a block and turning off your location information to try to uh, bilk the system and get that get the guarantee. Or falsifying delivery progress, giving incorrect information. That's like clicking and again, I can. That's going to probably be your if you're multi apping and you're trying. You drive by the restaurant and click it and then you leave or. Maybe you go to the restaurant and you click it and you leave. You want to be careful with that stuff because the app is tracking you. And if you try to turn off the tracking information, then you then you're going to get in trouble for masking or falsifying your location. So keep these things in mind, guys. Uh, but the most important part is the unassigned orders. They're giving you a grace period on that, and take advantage of that because it's very important, especially if you're driving and you know you see an order come through and it looks pretty good. Click accept, get to a safe location, review the order. If you don't like it, get rid of it. So kudos to Grubhub here, guys. If you're not aware of this, check your messages. It should be in your message box to everyone. But this is a, this is a game changer right here, guys. It really is, in my opinion. And it's another reason, if you're not on Grubhub, get on Grubhub. And uh, I think it's the most driver-friendly app, and it's the one that's actually trying to make a difference in the experience for the driver, the customer, uh, and, and trying to um, go about things. I mean, no, none of these are perfect, but I think they're they're the ones that's closest to trying to create a very positive experience for the driver. All right, guys, I'll be talking to you soon. I appreciate you watching. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and share this with at least one person that you think could gain benefit. Talk to you.